Hey guys, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. Hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. And welcome back to, of course, yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea News Daily. Daily Chelsea News here on Football Therapy. Here is where you can find me. And today we're reflecting on a few things, perhaps a positive advantage for Chelsea in the cup final against Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, which is a uh, positive, but hey, you know, well, you'll take whatever you get when it comes to cup finals, right? I also want to talk about uh, some nominations and positive Chelsea news there. I uh, also want to speak about what Sound gets said about Eden Hazard. I find that interesting. And perhaps finish off talking about Romelu Lukaku. Looking very happy in training with the gang. Um, what's the case with him? Is still, of course, a very divisive figure. A lot of people in their heads have like already made the decision that you know, Lukaku's done out here for them. Um, I'm just wondering if my mic's too loud. Anyway, we'll be all right. Let's start off with um, a, a tweet from Nizar Kinsella confirming some nominees. Jorginho, Antonio Rudiger, and Thiago Silva have been nominated for the London Footballer of the Year award. So that's Thiago Silva and Rudiger. Both have been amazing. Jorginho, of course, has had, the, you know, last year has been like, probably will be the greatest year of his career. Conor Gallagher is among the nominees for young in the young player category, and Edu, uh, Edu Mendy and Thomas Tuchel are nominated in the goalkeeper and manager categories, respectively. So, of course, as you'd imagine, Chelsea, the current reigning champions of Europe, who have already swept up in many categories of awards so far, uh, nominated for a lot of the London Footballer Awards. I remember when T T Tammy Abraham won young... Was he young footballer? Awards. I think Tammy Abraham, in his after his first season, might have won young footballer and senior footballer. It's, correct me if I'm wrong, but I seem to remember seeing Tammy Abraham holding two trophies. Anyway, good news. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Good news for Chelsea. Chelsea doing bits in award uh, ceremonies. Uh, so before we talk about um, Lukaku and the Liverpool final and stuff, something made, something that I found interesting is um, Sal Niguez when he spoke to Chelsea when he was interviewed on the website. I'm citing these quotes here off uh, the Metro. Because um, he's been, again, not a divisive character, Sal, but he, was, he came to Chelsea. People deliberately decided to forget he was out of form and perhaps myself included a little bit and um but he was still like Saul Niguez was like one of the big European midfielders that everyone wanted that was worth loads of money anyway um asked about the differences between the Premier League and La Liga Niguez told Chelsea's official website quote they are totally different over there it's much more tactical Whereas it's, over here, it's much more physical and a bit crazier, which is, is what you hear. You hear that the Premier League is faster and more physical. Uh, but when you think tactical, a lot of people used to say, well, Serie A is tactical in Italy. Um, you know, uh, Spain is just tiki tacker, just pass the ball all the time into it, make spaces. And then the Premier And these are all like generalizations, of course. And then the Premier League is um, fast and physical. The quote goes on, there's much more back and forth. It's less about having control of the game and more about entertaining the fans. You can do things here that you can't really do in La Liga. For example, I was talking to my friends the other day about Eden Hazard. When he was here, he was easily one of the best players in the world. And then he goes to La Liga and has his own difficulties because it's totally a different game. <laughs> so he's just saying, guys, I'm just like Eden Hazard. Maybe. Um, he has more one versus one and two versus one, but in La Liga, because everyone knows how good his team is and how good he is, other teams make it more difficult for him. Mate, he had that at Chelsea. I do know what he's saying, how there's a lot of man marking in English football and perhaps with players occupying spaces a bit more, maybe Eden Hazard has more space to take someone on 1v1 because that's what made it and Hazard great like his ability to drop a shoulder and get a yard really quickly and dribble around people and you know and then the rest of it just magic two-footed and all that here here it's happening a bit in reverse although I think it's a bit easier to adapt from La Liga to the Premier League than from the Premier League to La Liga which I find really interesting and I, I do find it really interesting that Saul uh, wanted to discuss that and use it as an example for a reverse maybe to just sort of explain look guys this is this is difficult and maybe that's the case look man I wanted to talk about that because I found it interesting what he said about Hazard with the 1v1s and the 2v1s because I thought that was true but I also wanted to talk about it because in terms of skill and ability Saul could be like 
so, so good and has been so, so good. I think maybe he's just a bit of a sort of timid guy and he did... Re one thing that made me question it from the beginning is when he arrived at Chelsea and said he was nervous and I was thinking, Ugh, you're in bad form, you've come into a new league and, you've, and you said you're nervous, which is great. I'm all for authenticity. I'm a huge advocate of vulnerability. I think it just shows strength to be vulnerable. The to, to be truly uh, vulnerable, you have to have a great deal of strength. But I thought this guy's not ready to hit the ground running, essentially. And seemingly, it proved so. Anyway, on to the talk about that. I thought it was interesting. Let's move on. Let's talk about the cup final. Of course, Chelsea are playing Liverpool in the League Cup final. Chelsea haven't won this for seven years, maybe? Do we want it? We want it. The Jose Mourinho won the double, did he, when he came back? I'm pretty sure he did. He loves the League Cup, Jose. Um, and we haven't won it for a long, long time. But Liverpool have had their match with Leeds rearranged. I'm going to read you a quick uh, extract from leedslive.co.uk. Meanwhile, Liverpool have their Carabao Cup final against Chelsea just four days after the match at Elland Road. So this is the match away at Leeds that uh, was supposed to be played and was rescheduled as well as having to face both Inter Milan in the Champions League and Norwich City in the Premier League the week before. Well, the week before, I think we'll have a Champions League game and a Premier League game, but they'll have four days to, um, to prepare after an away game to play Chelsea in the final. Whereas Chelsea, so we play the final on the 27th of February, and um, we will have five days, so we'll have an extra day, and that game that we are playing is against Lille at home. So we have a home game and then five days rest and then the final. And of course the final is in London uh, at Wembley. We're a London team, no travel really. So we have five days rest after a home game. They have four days rest after an away game. And then obviously they travel down to Wembley. So, I don't want to get people excited because this is relatively trivial, um, and obviously you don't want to be like, oh, now Jan said that we're definitely going to lose. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I did want to talk about it because these little things, that, you know, in, in the game, in the football, um, the Premier League, everything counts. These little adv advantageous things. They count for a lot, so I wanted to talk about that, and I wanted to highlight the fact how that, you know, the Scousers have already been on Twitter, like, oh, advantage Chelsea, da 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 uh, You know, I'm not so sure it's going to be a very difficult game. It depends who's in form. It depends, you know, who gets the tactics right. But it does also depend on energy levels and, you know, this, that, and the other. So if Liverpool are a little bit tired after playing high-octane leads at Ellen Road, it could be in our favour. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. But let's end on big Romelu Lukaku. Um, I'm seeing people on Twitter argue about Romelu Lukaku still. I saw people today saying, "Oh, it's not a Tuchel signing; it's a poor signing." I actually think it isn't a Tuchel signing, but I think Liam Twomey was on a space. Um, I can't remember who it's with. Forgive me. But um, he he was saying, uh, of course, of the Athletic, explaining how. Look, it wasn't a Tuchel signing. He's not getting too involved with signings. He knows Chelsea have great players. By the way, Twimi didn't say this. This is kind of like coming from me, like you know what I've what I've seen or it's been it's been inferred or whatever. Tuchel knows Chelsea's got an amazing squad. Tuchel knows Chelsea spend a lot of money on talented players. Whether they're the right player for the squad or not, that's up to you. Uh, often not, in my opinion. But I think he understands how he's in a good position in a club that's generally quite well run in terms of their facilities and how they deal with things uh, in Chelsea. You know, even if he's a bit worried about the trigger happy owner in terms of firing coaches. But um, yeah, I think he's probably no. He came into Chelsea with his eyes open. Like I'm the coach. I like being the coach. He does like being left alone. Matt Law uh, has uh, written about that and spoken about that, saying, "Look, he doesn't want to be involved with everything." And like you know, he doesn't want to be this Arsene Wenger uh, figure, like he was, at, you know, at Arsenal when everything goes through. Him. He wants to just deal with the football. He doesn't even like the media. Tuchel, you know, likes just coaching. So with that, I mean, it's a bit of a digression there. But with that, he reportedly was happy not having any signings after winning the Champions League. He saw something he could develop there and, you know, maybe look at low knees and hopefully get a signing, but he wasn't like a Conte after winning the Premier League. I need this, 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 and this, and this. We need all this to move on. Maybe Conte was right because we were poor after we won the Premier League. Uh, Tuchel's not like that. 
I think he had that meeting, you know, of course I've reported it on it here at the channel before, that after he won the Champions League, he had a meeting with Roman Abramovich next day, who offered him a new contract and promised him a star striker. He thought, yeah, you know what, we can't convert goals, I'll take it. They weren't Romelu Lukaku's available, or we can make him available. He's a player that us as a club have wanted back for a while. You know, would you use this guy? And Tuchel's gone, yeah, look, look at this Inter Milan striker. He scores, like, what was it, like 65, 70 goals in two seasons or something crazy. I'll have him, yes, please. Um, you know, in his prime, a different different profile to what we're using up front. So he hasn't said, like, get me Romelu Lukaku. He's gone, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like somewhere in the middle, do you know what I mean? Whereas people say it's a two cool target, it's a board target. Really, it's a board target. Two has gone all right. He's not been lumbered with a, a really expensive asset that he feels obligated to play. He's struggling to fit in a player who he sort of gave the thumbs up to, but wasn't his target, wasn't his recommendation, which I think is an important part of this. So, of course, we all know the story, the, um, you know, the uh, ruddy interview and all this, that and the other, and how he still divides his uh, opinion with Chelsea fans, how seemingly every away fan base sings, Romelu Lukaku, he's in Milan. That won't go away for a while. Um, and he's done that to himself, and he's done that to us as Chelsea fans, really. He hasn't been great, scored, what, four goals in the Premier League, maybe five goals in the Premier League, I don't know. Not much, not many, you know. Um, but who knows, he, if he goes on a scoring spree, he could end the season with more than Cristiano Ronaldo. I think he's got seven or something. Anyway... It can still work with Romelu Lukaku, and I wanted to talk about this because I thought about it earlier when I saw the training video. I saw a training video on the Chelsea YouTube. He, they're like all laughing. He's completely involved, you know, like laughing and hugging everyone, and seems quite integrated as a character. And when you see that, you think, and you know, everyone always talks about how he's got this like a uh, graduate degree and he speaks seven or eight languages, and you think, just how can someone so in, you know, reportedly intelligent be so profoundly stupid with that interview and just, you know, not settling it. I mean, whatever. We all make mistakes. I'm not going to ruminate on that. Point being, I wanted to talk about he can still work with Lukaku. If he scores a few goals, things change so quickly in football. So many people have, like, written him off. And, and you know, the arts and articles come out saying, you know, Chelsea find appropriate Lukaku replacement in the summer. Maybe he does go. But the truth is... I think he's going to stay in the team if he scores a few goals, if we end the season strong. If he ends the season with like 10 Premier League goals, he's not going anywhere and he's starting next season as the striker, I think. Do you know what I mean? Um, can it happen? Well, I don't know. I want to put it out to you guys. Time is the greatest healer. It really is. If after a while we see Romelu Lukaku scoring goals and we forget about the interview and he's like, you know, celebrate not even like, you know, kissing the badge and all that, but just scoring goals and celebrating with his teammates and looking like he's enjoying himself on the pitch and he's happy to be scoring goals for Chelsea. Ultimately, that will be enough. Uh, I wanted to end on that because I've been thinking about it lately and I've, you know, after watching that content of him laughing and training. So I put it out to you guys. I want your thoughts, feelings and opinions down in the comment section below and um, I'd urge you all to please drop a like on your way out and you're all welcome to subscribe. I'm out. Peace. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.